you can just see the Commodore's got a little bit more entry speed, just carries a little bit through the corner. It just hurts Watt coming off. He needed a rear gunner. He needed another four. He needed Gray in there. And yeah. if he had Ryle Harris without that success ballast, he'd have one. He's going to be a lamb to the Holden Lion slaughter here. They'll pick him off. It's funny, Fords were so dominant here last year with Walton actually taking the round win. Someone just locking a left front there on the way in. Let's see what Walton, he's got a nice little jump out of that last turn. Let's see if he can hang on. Tim Jane here we're looking at in the background who started. He just keeps on trucking. He never gives up, does he? Oh, that was a bit of a moment now. Pretty after seeing over and else make this He's move. He's going to get one in the door here, moving wide. This is where the track comes off the crash. So this is going to keep on going to the next corner. Walton's oh. moving him over. He says, get out of it, mate. I was just waiting for those here two wheels to Here comes McNally with him. And this is the thing that was always going to hurt Walton. He's just going to get freight trained here now. Is he going to throw it back down the inside of McNally at the next turn? He'll be brave. McNally, the race winner. And now he's on the outside for the next one. They shared the podium here last year, and they just squeezed through, but McNally prevails. And now the two guys that started in the front row are Race fighting there. Good racing, though. It's what we come to see, wasn't it? The reverse grid racing. The reverse grid always point. mixes it up. Oh, and he misses the gear now as well. Yeah, so this will leave him vulnerable to Gray in the braking area here. And maybe Dontis. Watch Dontis. And Gray just gets him. He can't afford to miss it. Dontis will follow through here. Get an overlap, follow through. And nothing Walton can do about it except try and hang on to the next corner. Yeah, no grip Dontis out there. just gives him one in the door, which loosens him up enough, and he can't get back on the gas. All acceptable conduct here in V8 Ute Racing. <laughs> so is that too, little shot in the uh, red That's target. That's about it. Just let the boys sort it out. Get the elbows up. I saw the uh, Dontis family last night having dinner. There was a whole bunch of them. It was his mum's side of the family that are actually from this part of the world. His 93-year-old grandma Dorothy was meant to be at the track this weekend, but unfortunately... Here we comes here. McNally. Yeah, here's McNally for oh, third. Pretty, pretty will just go, I'll give it to you, mate. There's nothing I can do about you today. He doesn't. He hangs out the outside, <laughs> Nathan. Pretty, who's had a, uh, a fairly good run here. Kim Jane all over the back of Walton now. In the park. He'll want a piece of it. Another Holden, so he wants to tick off another Ford here. And Mason Barbera is going with this group. That is impressive. He's tagged onto the back of this long train of cars. He's... Here's that stylish line from McNally. Just loose as fast. He loves it. Giving those super shots a workout this weekend. Be part of the track here. The Utes don't register it quite as much as a uh, Carrera Cup car. Now again, has a look. Has race. a look. He's trying. It's not quite an overload. Nathan just turns oh. in. And a lot of confidence that he knows McNally's not going to use him up. So he knows McNally's going to do a fair pass on him. He's not going to dive bomb him and waste him. Pretty has a lot of respect for those guys that he can race cleanly. Yeah, it's uh, you get to know who you can race against. Nelly just jumps off that turn. And Cedars is gone here, 2.3 second lead. This track you will rise again at turn two. Will he have a look? Has a bit of a look? Not enough. Nathan takes the opposite line. Kip Jane got a little bit defensive now. Yeah, he's Grant Johnson. Grant Johnson on the outside. Outside the teenager, Mason Barbera. Oh, Johnson in the fence, hard. That's hard enough to break a rib or maybe even puncture a tire. And Harris seeing a weakness. It just pounces. It's in there. The roll just playing a real conservative game, just waiting for guys to make mistakes and just chipping away at his championship points. Oh. The best thing that can probably happen to Roll is he loses the lead in the champion and gets some weight out of his youth. Great battle this one. Kim Jane over the curves with Mason Barbera. Complete opposite ends of their career. Kip Jane, after all the success in NASCAR and uh, making good his career in the Utes as well. And Barbera. Teenager from up Climb the, the ladder. Up. Yep. We'd love to see Getting it. Better each time out. Little rattle on the back, tries to move Kim wide. Kim's onto that, just keeps the car moving. 
This is the battle once again. Now watch car 33 here. Two-time champ yeah. in the all-purpose. We'll Wild see how the you. wall comes back out. The wall comes oh. back out to the right, so this will be the corner tightens up. This will be fairly graphic, I imagine. Well, Kim Jane actually uh, got it. Well, as if he followed Jane into it. He did. A bit Kim, Kim is used to driving up against the wall in NASCAR, <laughs> so he's not scared of that. <laughs> he knows the wall won't hurt you if you get close to it. Oh, Barbera's got the rears bouncing Beachy around. Having a look. Beachy's having a look on Ryle. Oh. Gives him some room. Over the curbs. That was pretty fair. Nice job by Beachy. Grant Johnson's disappeared out of this. He's actually in the pit, so okay, he didn't turn to left rear. Wanted that thing up at turn two. See you what, Matt Stone Racing not having the weekend out like they had in Darwin. Nah, Jimmy Stone saying, I want to get a Commodore. I want one of each. I want a Holt and I want a Ford. Well, we do see that with Cedars. They've got two Holdens. Yeah, he reckons that's the key to it. Hedge your bets, you reckon? I reckon if you wanted to win the championship, you'd have one of each car. So just pick which one you're going to drive each weekend. Because <laughs> when they handicap one brand and go the other one, you just switch over. That'd be handy. <laughs> yeah. Right, so I've got a bad, uh, bad way to go about your racing. Uh, Cedars is leading 2.8 seconds over Adam Marjoram at the moment. Pretty hanging on for third. But here we go. This is the race. with his mirrors full here. By the way, George Medici started last, he's climbed up to 15th, so he's looking pretty good for the DBA Heartbreaker Award right there, doing a great job. Just adjust his mirror near Cedars, having a look how much gap he's got over Marjoram, which is enough. Two laps to go. He'd be now in tyre conservation mode, so will Marjoram. Got to use these tyres again for race three, so they know they've got a bit of a break. And they'll have the front row as well. Have the front row, they'll be just saving it up. Ooh. Got a yellow flag here, who's that? Lee Nicolau, I think, is uh, the one who looked to be around there. He's got, got, he's got Ollie the Octopus on the, uh, on the bonnet here this weekend, which is uh, all about supporting a local charity, Paul. That's good. Which is uh, the local charity for kids cancer, and Ollie the Octopus, part of uh, Lee Nicolau's team, the Golden Octopus. So the best board we got is Jeremy Gray in fifth spot. Just hanging in there, trying... Trying to hang tough. We'd have to say on paper the, the Commodores are dominant this weekend. Ooh, bit of a moment. Beachy. Kip Jane and Beachy. Oh, a bit of a tap with Harris. Someone's going to the grass here. No, they make it stick. Sorted it out. That is impressive. Still, McNally wants to grab another spot. He's on for a round win here, absolutely. This is only the difference between starting either inside or outside of row two. I think he's got one today. more chance here, and that's in turn two. This lap, he's just going to have to throw it down the inside. Yeah, extra couple of championship points up the grab zone. He's going to have to half waste Nathan to do it, so how much do they respect each other? <laughs> I think a lot. I think a lot of guys would have respect for Nathan for his career and what he's achieved. Certainly do. Whether it be racing around the Thunderdome or racing in V8 supercars. And if you can race him cleanly, you two will also... Nathan's got him covered here, so... Get some of that respect. Marjoram definitely caught off the search party for the lead, but in doing so, you'll probably save some tyres for later today. Pretty much the simple way of putting it, the tyres that are on the car now will more than likely be the tyres that are on the car later. Yeah, it might move them around a bit. Fronts to rear, something like that. Yeah, the left rear just pops a hide around here, so what you tend to do is take the right front off and shove it on the left rear. That's the lead. And here's the battle for third, still going on. McNally's just so strong through this part of the track, but there isn't really a passing opportunity until you get to the hairpin. No, it's good for lap time, but if there's someone in front of you, you can't take advantage of it. As you see, he ranged up on the back of Nathan, carried more speed, but just couldn't do anything with it. This is his last chance. Oh, he's having a go. He kept his foot in it, but he's, he's not having a look. He's sort of pretending he's having a go, but Nathan's under that one. He's seen that one a million times before. It's looking a bit smoky there, McDally. I wasn't sure if that was just in the downshift or a downshift that's puffing a bit of smoke. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, it's the Mango Credit U. He'll start on the pole and go into the last race the with two. a one-point lead over McNally. He's got the mirrors on. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the wipers on, sorry, in celebration. But he crosses the line first. Congratulations to David Cedars. And that that is getting smokier for McNally. That could be a problem for later. Hopefully it's just power steering and nothing too sus. But uh, he ended up finishing fourth. And this guy has put in the drive of the race. He's climbed to 13th. He started back in 28th. Awesome job by wow. Sleeko. And it looks straight. There's nothing hanging off it. It's still got all the mirrors on it. So he obviously... Uh, 
moved his way through the pack cleanly. Would have been good to see some action from that. That is impressive. He actually won the first ever race here in the streets of Townsville back in 2009 as part of the support for V8 Supercars when they made their first trip here. I think it was the Dunlop uh, Townsville 400 back then. It was. And this is the man who has taken out race two. Oh, yeah. And uh, that is his first win in a Holden. So there you go. He's won one in a Ford now and definitely won a few in a Ford, but he's also made it stick in a Holden. And by just 1.9 seconds in the end, he is the victor from Adam Marjoram, who's equaled his best ever result when he scored a second in Perth. Nathan Pretty rounding out the top three. He always seems to go well on the street circuits. Over the page we go. We've got Mediki climbing up through the field. And uh, what a great drive that was from him. One more page of results for Michael Armand, who never made it out. And heartbreak for Jared McLeod, who absolutely would have been a part of that battle.